Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The next tooth that we're going to wax is the upper right second bicuspid. Now, before we uh, open the typodont, we'd want you to notice we've placed the prepared tooth in the typodont. It's firmly seated. Make sure that your tooth is firmly seated. Now, so you have some guide. We should look and see the length of the cusp of the teeth on each side. And we will want to produce a cusp on this tooth, a buccal cusp, that blends in and is approximately the same length as a buccal cusp of the bicuspid and the molar. Also, as we open the typodont, you notice that the lingual cusp has been shortened. Now, the lingual cusp of the upper tooth is a supporting cusp. It's a, tooth, it's a cusp that's in contact with the opposing uh, teeth and the opposing arch. And this cusp normally will contact on the distal marginal ridge of the second lower bicuspid and the medial marginal ridge of the first molar. Now, this is not always the case, but that is the normal uh, picture. Now, our first step that we would like to do is to uh, fill in the prepared cavity with wax and then place the uh, lingual cusp and the buccal cusp to show you how to place the cusp height. At the same time we do this, we will be forming the contact between the approximating teeth. And we will also uh, roughly produce the marginal ridges. They should approximate the, the uh, height of the opposing uh, marginal ridges. They should be approximately the same heights as the marginal ridge on the bicuspid and the molar. Now, we won't do all of the waxing on camera. Uh, we'll do the highlights of it and, uh, and show you how to follow each step. Now, again, you can use whichever instrument uh, you find you work the best with. I'm going to use the P.K. Thomas waxing instrument uh, number one. And the first thing I'm going to do then is to put some wax into the prepared uh, cavity. I think I'll set the type of dot. Uh, down so it'll be stable. And remember to support your fingers and when you're working in the mouth, and of course you'll use the teeth to support your hand. Form a fulcrum so that you have absolute control of your instrument. This becomes even more important, of course, when you're working on a live patient and, and uh, you don't want to slip and damage the patient. Now don't blow straight excesses of wax, but Take the time and, and uh, blow the wax using about the amount of wax uh, that you need and not have a lot of extra wax so you have to go back and spend a lot of time carving it away. Now when you do build wax in the mouth or on your model such as this, it will attach itself to the adjacent teeth. And as it does that, of course, that has a stabilizing effect on the wax. But that means when you get ready to either remove the wax or in the case here where we remove the tooth from the typodont, why it's necessary to separate the wax from the opposing tooth before you do that. Now, what we've done so far really is filled in the cavity preparation and roughly have the height of the marginal ridge on the mesial and on the distal. And if the wax doesn't flow, remember, Heat your instrument a little more so you get a, a smooth flow of the wax. Now we're going to add just a little bit on the buckle, the cusp, the lingual incline of the buckle cusp, and then when we get ready to uh, finalize our anatomy, of course, we'll have to add more wax in this area. Now remember that the buckle cusp is not built in tight contact with the lower tooth. We have a slight amount of uh, over jet permits the movement of the tooth. If it were in tight contact, you would be locked in. The lingual cusp, as we said, is a supporting cusp, and it should be approximately the same height as the cusp on the bicuspid and the molar, and we want to check that in a moment here, then the occlusion. Now, we try to flow the cusp so that the cusp point is the highest elevation. 
And uh, so this means we have to flow a little base as we did on our thumbnail, and then we try to bring it to a uh, elevation so that the, the tough tip will be the highest. And this will be the part that then would contact your opposing teeth. Now the way you, of course, check that is to, is to close the visidant or close it and see if uh, we're getting somewhere in the right uh, height cut. And we're approximately right. Now we're going to uh, fade out and do a little of uh, the uh, other waxing and come back and show you the other highlights. tooth from the typodont and we flowed wax so we can begin to develop our axial contours. And you'll notice here, this is the area in which the wax was in contact with the adjacent uh, tooth. We have one both on the uh, distal and on the mesial. Now that's too broad a contact. That's not the shape of contact there we want. And also the contour is not the type of contour. The wax has just been flowed on. Now you can flow the contour, or if you want, you can use your uh, Ward C carver and you can, and can carve some of the contour in. Now we have to remember that we do leave room for the inner dental papillae and approximately. We want to keep the contact point approximately a millimeter below the uh, marginal ridge height. Also on the distal, we have a point contact and the marginal ridge is not complete and I'll show you how to flow a marginal ridge. So we want to remove some of this little excess wax so we have a slight concavity, uh, not a bulbous uh, interproximal contour. And this can either be done with slight carving as I'm doing or in your initial flow you can just flow the wax to this contour. Now. I want to show you here how you can flow a marginal ridge. And again, we'll use the P.K. Thomas number one uh, waxing instrument. Uh, we get a little wax on it. And, and uh, by supporting your fingers now uh, against your opposing hand, uh, we can come in and we can flow this contour. Now, as you remember, the lingual cusp has a mesial slant. So this means the distal incline of that cusp is longer than the mesial incline and it is continuous with the distal marginal ridge. So we want to flow this marginal ridge in, keep the instrument hot enough so the wax flows. And we're not quite warm enough here. And then we get a nice contour. Now by using the back of the instrument slightly, be sure you don't have excess wax on the instrument, uh, we can smooth the wax the carving instrument. Another way to create this uh, slight, very slight concavity on the approximate area is to use a warm instrument in this manner and remove a little of the wax. And that allows a space for the interproximal um, interdental papillae. Now, the wax has just a rough contour. We, it isn't finished, and we will polish the wax uh, when we're finished. But by using the instrument warm, you can again iron the wax, and you get a certain amount of, of smoothness uh, in that manner. Now we're going to fade out again uh, for just a little bit and uh, put the tooth back into the typodont and then develop some of the occlusal anatomy and then show you uh, the end part of that and the final wax. We've placed the tooth back in the typodont and we've developed the 
axial and interproximal contours. We have the occlusal table nearly done. It needs to have a slight amount of wax added on the incline in this area, which we do now. And then we will detail the anatomy with our groove uh, instrument. And then we will check the contour a little more and uh, polish it with cold water and cotton. And then it will be completed. Now, that would complete the waxing. You can warm the beaver tail. And on this type of a, a uh, waxing, just using a warm instrument that you can touch with your finger, you can go in and smooth your Crust inclines uh, slightly so that you have a little more detail to your anatomy in that manner. Be sure and clean your instruments again because if wax is left on them when you pick them up, well, you might blow your wax. Now, we discussed the grooving instrument, and this instrument is not planed, but by using it as a very light touch, we can actually develop grooves in the anatomy, you notice that little pieces of wax, flicks of wax do come up. And we'll pick those up then with some cotton and uh, cold water. Now, there are a number of different grooves that can be placed. We're just going to place the basic grooves now because in a later course, you do learn to put in supplemental grooves and, and uh, other grooves that you might want to. Now, using the cotton in cold water and squeeze the water out of the cotton to the point that you don't have water all over, and then we come by and pick up the little flakes of wax and uh, with the cotton. Now, I can see that we've scorched a small piece of wax into one of the areas, so by using the beaver tail again, we can, we can pick that up. You have to experiment a little bit so that you learn which instruments you can do certain tasks with. So this is our, our wax. It's uh, completed now. And if we close the typodont, we can see we have uh, a, a slight amount of uh, overjet on the uh, wax. And uh, if we look closely, we can see that we have uh, good interproximal contours allowing for the interdental papillae. And this then would complete the waxing of the three-quarter crown on tooth number four, and you should have it checked in by the instructor. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.